Welcome to this EmacsConf 2021 talk on Emacs as Design Pattern Learning. I'm Greta Goetz, and this talk is for people who are interested in thinking about Emacs as a tool that's sophisticated enough not only to cope with activities and tasks, but also sophisticated enough to cater to a complex assemblage of tasks, activities, but also people, outcomes, as well as tools. This is a definition of epistemic fluency from a work by Marcus Geit and Goodyear that is relevant to us if we're interested in learning how to learn, how to continuously iterate knowledge to fit changing, complex, specific contexts. Some software oversimplifies. Emacs both helps users implement design pattern learning that can cope with complexity and it models complex design pattern learning. So what do we mean by design patterns? The term comes from design theorist and architect Christopher Alexander, whose work influenced a broad variety of disciplines. I'll be drawing on a work in programming by Richard Gabriel and in pedagogy by Peter Goodyear. What are design patterns? They are patterns of micro solutions combining method and artifact and macro solutions of these micro patterns when viewed together. This approach allows for specialization, customization, extension, and reuse of patterns. This is useful if we're seeking to deal with complexity. It helps extend the assemblage of learning components that we have without having to build from scratch. Another important feature of design patterns and their relevance to Emacs is the human-centeredness. Christopher Alexander critiqued the mechanical and championed the human place, Emacs too champions the human place. So why Emacs and design learning? One reason is indeed this extensibility through Emacs, which allows a person to extend their learning and use of Emacs as far as they wish to take it. This is thanks to its free software core, and this permits what we call in networked learning e quality, which is to say the opportunity to co-create knowledge. So if one wishes to extend their learning trajectory with Emacs such that they're able to write packages for Emacs, if these packages become part of the core, they are really co-creating knowledge within the community and extending the capabilities of Emacs. Emacs can also be considered in terms of design pattern learning because it can be used for different purposes. This is true even at the very basic level of Emacs functionalities, which is a point that should really be stressed. So even newcomers coming to Emacs who don't know programming can do a very broad variety of different things with their Emacs using these basic functionalities. For example, simply by customizing the language variable in the initialization file, this, thanks to the powerful Emacs Lisp interpreter makes it possible for one to do a wide variety of different things within Emacs, from making graphs to exporting in LaTeX. And also part of the Emacs basic functionalities are how we can cycle through different tasks and texts very easily through buffer cycling, or how within org we can use tree outlines that can hierarchize the material that we're working with and even change from being a headline into a to-do. So we see this extensibility, this flexibility. Also with an org, we can see how by writing just a few lines of code, such as through header arguments or code blocks, we can change the way in which a file or part of a file is executed. An illustration of what this means to the beginner would be how easy it is to export a LaTeX file, so one doesn't even need to know all of LaTeX to be able to implement parts of LaTeX within org. So this variety of different purposes then can be experienced by the beginner. And Emacs is also an example of design pattern learning because it is a design pattern of learning itself. Here we're thinking about design patterns as a visual representation we can think of how systems of systems, which Emacs is an example of, stem from a successful center. And this center is surrounded by a boundary, which is itself made up of centers. So 
where we have Emacs at the center, we also have packages such as Majit. Majit can be viewed as a center unto itself. However, this center only exists thanks to the center of the center, which is Emacs. And thus we speak of Emacs as being successful design pattern implementation. And why do we care about design pattern approaches here? Well, what I'm trying to say is that this is useful to the person who is interested in being able to more efficiently cope with complex and specific situations. And this design pattern allows for this because of its extensibility, because we can find these specializations or customizations that are able to reach these changing contexts. This can be compared with other software applications that are prefabricated, so they already decide what it is a person is going to do when they use them. This also means that what they're doing within these applications can get stranded there, that it's harder to integrate their knowledge or their texts or their activities with each other. A lot of software also makes assumptions on who their users are. We know that we speak in user experience design of the customer journey or of personas, and very often then the customer journey is pre-designed. But within Emacs, we can be our own persona. Practical use of Emacs can also make non-programmers into programmers. So this is to say that as we are using Emacs, we can continue to develop as far as we wish. Therefore, we are not only users within Emacs, but we are also creative persons and producers. So here I am citing work by Ivan Illich. We can further contribute to the evolution of the rules of Emacs to draw on Bernard Stiller. If I may also make this analogy, within our inits, we contribute to the evolution of the rules according to which our Emacs works for us. But again, if we're extending our learning trajectory and if we write a package and the, write it, and the package becomes part of the core, we do indeed contribute to the evolution of the rules of Emacs. But because it stems from our personal use and our personal customizations, we can think of it as being a personal toolkit. So this design pattern iteration approach to Emacs is the very reason why it is that we can customize it to our own liking. And using Emacs to extend our freedom then helps us to develop heuristics. It helps us develop our decision-making, our problem-solving and responsibility for what it is that we're doing. And these skill sets are extensible beyond Emacs. These can be considered as life skills that have relevance beyond. This is a very good example of why it is that being exposed to complex assemblages matter to us as human beings. So it's good training ground for life, but it's also important for a very basic pedagogical point. So now I'm going to draw on work by Ellen trocme fabre who explains that reduced and poor contextualizations flatten communication. So for example, within the field of software, if we are using an application that only asks us to swipe left or right, this deprives us of our ability to respond in a more sophisticated way. So by contrast, by being exposed to a rich contextualization within Emacs, we are learning to contextualize, which Trocme Fabre says is the first step in learning how to learn. So we can understand just how important it is to be exposed to complexity. It's not just a mere intellectual exercise, but it is indeed how it is that we begin to learn. If this sounds too abstract, maybe we can step back for a moment and think about visualizing Emacs as a mental map. So here too, I'm going to draw on Trocme Fabre, and she is building her ideas on those of Tony Buzan, who was the popularizer of the mind map. So mind maps begin with a core, which with Emacs is the Emacs core, which now includes org. They extend outwards from the core through relational codes and then through keywords and cycling, mind maps function to bring out further ideas. And this may be the experience you've already had with your Emacs. Then finally, these mind maps extend outwards at the periphery. 
in thinking about how this applies to Emacs, we can think about how, yes, indeed, we all share the same core, but then we extend this core outwards into our personal configurations. So this is the social moment, but this social moment is integral to Emacs because Emacs fully achieves its meaning when it is being applied, extended and customized in this way. Further, these social branches are relevant to the continuation of learning how to learn how to use Emacs. So for example, we may have our first configuration file and then we might want to compare it with other people's configuration files, not only to see what code they're using, but also to see how it is that they are implementing certain functionalities within their workflow. So along these lines then, descriptive configuration files are extremely helpful. This map then of Emacs can be considered as a frontierless heuristic schema, borrowing from Trocne Fabre, frontierless because we can extend our use of Emacs as far as we want, heuristic again because we're using it to solve problems, etc. This is a free system that extends following our own paths of desire, if I can use that phrase from design. So it's following our own paths of desire, but yet it is a shared tool. So this is an idea of the convivial tool to draw on Ivan Illich. Emacs is itself a design pattern framework, so we can visualize this through the mind map, but we can also go back to thinking about how Christopher Alexander's work inspired Richard Gabriel to think about systems of systems within software, and he, drawing on Alexander, says, well, there is such a thing as a being of successful software if it succeeds in being a center of centers as we saw before. So in Emacs then we have a system that's made up of other systems of communicating components that work together to provide a comprehensive set of capabilities that can be customized, specialized and extended to provide more or slightly different capabilities. So if we're not finding what we need within the core, we can look for packages that allow us to extend in a certain way, or we write our own, or we begin to write in Emacs Lisp. And speaking of personal customizations, Emacs can be considered as an extension of the as yet unfulfilled promise of general computing. In the 1980s, Michael Crichton wrote that it's easy to use computers, which is fortunate because everyone's going to have to learn. It's not easy to use computers wisely, which is unfortunate because everyone's going to have to learn. Emacs is wise computing because everyone's Emacs is their own. We see that it is an exercise in heuristics, but while it is complex at, on some level, we want to remember that it can be used easily by anybody as often or as seldom as they want for the purpose that they are choosing and shaped according to their own taste. So again, I'm drawing on Ivan Illich here. Emacs then champions the human place and is a support in our learning how to learn. So now I want to think about being inspired by the Emacs design pattern and comparing what I think I've learned about how Emacs works with some research that has been done by Philip Guo and his colleagues uh, about how technology is being used in certain online contexts. Researchers continue to note how the modes of delivery of content continue to change in terms of what is considered effective and what is not. The talking head was considered effective, for example. Lectures needed to be broken down into shorter segments. But I would say that by using Emacs and by working within the Emacs ecosystem, one is already used to representing one's knowledge in a variety of different ways. So if we are called tomorrow to deliver in a different way, we're already used to thinking about this within Emacs. So for example, merely by changing a header argument, one, one can change the way in which text in a file is executed. So we see then this easy iteration within Emacs. We can also think about how Emacs can be considered in terms of a help for developing rhetorical topoi, topoi being places where we find things, places where we find ideas. Because we can circulate 
among the different tasks and texts that we are working on within Emacs seamlessly, this increases the likelihood that we can gain the inspiration of, of the collage of different ideas that, that bring out new ideas. At least this is how I've experienced Emacs, if I may add that anecdotal observation. And speaking of bringing out ideas, we see how changing Emacs functionalities can help us bring out ideas, for example, through how we can use Plant UML easier today than ever before, so we can now include mental maps within our Emacs files if we want to, but also if we're thinking about Emacs helping us both remember the material that we're working with and represent it, we can think of it in terms of its archival functions. So we can see an example of this in Sasha Chua's in it, where she is using Emacs to manage her recent sketches. This would be really useful for implementation in terms of what the researchers, Philip Guo and his colleagues, discovered with regards to how today Khan style slides are considered more effective than traditional slides because if one is able to integrate the other kinds of sketches that one has been doing within Emacs and therefore have them at hand more easily, it would be easier to represent this material as needed in the changing context of the classroom. We can see from this example of Sasha Chua's in it that we learn by following the traces left by others in the community. So we were saying then that Emacs extends outwards through these social branches and indeed we can speak of the grammar of interaction that we benefit from by being a member of the Emacs community. And this wonderful phrase comes to us from a book that was co-edited by our very own former org father, Bastien Gary, in an interview that he led with Nicolo Gom. Nicolo Gom was explaining how in video games we see our character and compare our character to other characters and we watch how other characters make decisions and the outcomes of these decisions and their trajectories in the game. And then we compare where we are with respect to this. And by having this comparison, it helps us chart out our own path. So we can experience this grammar of interaction within Emacs every time we compare our config with that of others. Emacs further champions the social element through co-individuation, which is a term coined by Bernard Stiegler. This means the meaning that is known and shared by other individuals. What is it that we know and share within Emacs? It is how to improve our lives through customizing Emacs in specific ways. So if one person reaches the apotheosis of individuation and they're living the life they <laughs> dreamed of through their Emacs use, they can share this information with somebody else who too can come to realize themselves in this way. Without the social milieu, without this attention to the human element, the technical milieu inevitably becomes a negative externality. So here I'm drawing on Bernard Stiegler. What does this mean? This means where knowledge becomes automaticized. It becomes a closed and self-referential system. Because it's self-referential and closed, there is no need for any human input. So the human within this system turns into a servant. By contrast, by using human-centered Emacs, we are able to take care of our neighbors. We can write extensions for them. We can help each other on the forums. We can even teach just one more person how to use Emacs. And this idea comes from Ivan Ilyich, who is, extends it to say that by taking care of our neighbors in this way, this enables us to excel at using the best available tools, the tool here being Emacs. The community aspect of Emacs can also be seen in how the core of Emacs itself is evolving. So just like we are configuring and programming Emacs while we are using it, Emacs too continues to develop as the core expands. So in this too, we see how Emacs is a model of design pattern learning that we can be inspired from. And the fact that people from the Emacs community are able to contribute to the core brings emphasis to the 
community role in this design pattern. So at the beginning, we were saying we're interested in the complex assemblage, not just of activities and tools, but also of people. So here we are talking about an Emacs community. This is also thanks to the selfless work of people like Sasha Chua or blog rings such as Planet Emacs Life that bring us together so that we truly can say that there is a community. This conference is an example of this and thanks to the conference organizers. But this community, because of the free core, allows for there to be different viewpoints within the community. And one thing that I've noticed about the Emacs community is that there are sometimes even competing views within the community. This can be considered proof of concept of systems thinker and philosopher Edgar Morin's idea of a cognitive democracy, which is to say a community that is nourished by antagonisms while also regulating them. The being of this very special community then very importantly stems from how at the center we have free software that, ex that allows for this range of difference and range of extensibility to exist even within the community. So by way of a conclusion, we can think of Emacs as the center of centers that expands, that is relational and free. Only in some systems, we should add, <laughs> does this being emerge? So this going back to Richard Gabriel, just to champion Emacs one more time before we say goodbye. Only in some systems, some software systems does a system succeed in becoming the center of all of the other centers and become a framework that can be used and reused, which gives systems and objects their spirit. So Emacs is being used and reused through these packages and it gives to them their spirit. The spirit, I would argue, is in part this extensibility and sometimes even difference. Emacs values the value of the freedom to create, use and share so we can be inspired by this design pattern. It, is, it rallies an autonomous designer mindset and encourages and supports us on our path towards design pattern iteration. It is not a flattened contextualization. It permits ongoing learning, reassembling contexts, and an adaptable design pattern extensibility. Ultimately, it helps us create circumstances where learning is coherent with what is valued in the rest of life, pleasure, growth, and transformation. So thank you on that note to all of the developers, maintainers, contributors, and community for championing our freedom to co-individuate complex design patterns the way we want to, so we too can leave original traces if we want to. Thank you very much.